Who gets better grades, males or females? A randomly selected sample of 61 female students had an average college GPA of 3.08 points with a standard deviation of 0.32 points. A randomly selected sample of 64 male students had an average college GPA of 2.9 points with a standard deviation of 0.34 points. Use a 5% significance level and the p-value method to test the claim that there is a significant difference between the average GPAs of male and female students. So let's first notice what I've underlined here. They ask us to use a 5% significance to I use the p-value method to test the claim. So to test the claim is keywords telling us it's a hypothesis test, and we're doing the test for the difference between the average GPAs. The other thing I want to notice is that there are a large sample size for these two samples, right? And it's two separate groups that are being sampled, so it looks like I'm dealing with an independent z-test. So I'm comparing two independent populations, I want to compare their means. So the first thing I want to do is express the claim for the problem. So let's start out with that. So the claim here can be found right here after the phrase test the claim that there is a difference between the average GPAs. So that means that if we're comparing, for example, the mean for females and the mean for males, if you're just saying there's a difference, you're saying that they're not equal to one another, that they're not the same, right? You're not saying one's better than the other, you're just saying they're different. So one is not the same as the other. So not equal to is appropriate. Now if that's not equal to, that means that that's the same as HA. So the next step where we come up with HO and HA, and this problem will let the claim and HA be the same. So the mean for females not equal to the mean for males. That's your HA. The opposite of that is then equal to. So that'll be our HO, right? The mean for females is equal to the mean for males. Now from here, our next step is to collect the data. So let's get the data for both females and males. And we're going to take that right from the problem, of course, right? All right, so let's look at this and start out by saying, okay, the females had a sample size of 61 with an average of 3.08 and a standard deviation of 0.32. Then it says that the males had a sample size of 64 with a sample mean of 2.9 points and a standard deviation of 0.34 and of course the alpha here is 5 percent 0.05 okay so we have all the data now our next step is come up with a test statistic right so we want to put the test stat formula down and work out the test statistic all right so the formula for the test stat here is going to be a z test stat because the sample sizes are both large and so we're going to go ahead and use z as the notation and then we'll have x bar minus x bar in this case it's going to be the x bar for females minus males we're doing it in that order because that's how we have the claim set up female to male right so that's how we'll do it here um, normally you have a minus d sub zero in the formula that would be if you had a number in ho somewhere but we don't have a number so we don't have to include that and then we'll have the square root of now here we're going to have s for the female so or in other words in this case we should have sigma for the female squared over n1 or n for the females right plus sigma for the males squared over n for the males however we won't have the population values we'll use the samples as an estimate of that right so we'll use s squared instead of sigma squared let's plug in the numbers and see what we get then okay so the differences here are going to be 3.08 for females minus 2.9 for males then we're going to have under the square root uh, 0.32 squared over 61 plus 0.34 squared over 64. Now we're going to work all that out with our calculator. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this in one step with the calculator, putting the top part in parentheses, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses 3.08 minus 2.9, I'm going to close the parenthesis, then I'm going to hit divide by, then I'm going to use the square root symbol, square root, and just type in what I see there, 0.32 squared divided by 61 plus 0.34 squared divided by 64. And then close that parenthesis there, which is the parenthesis that came with the square root, hit enter, and I end up with a result of 3.05 when I round it off to two places. For the p-value method, we should use two decimal places, so we'll use 3.05.
There's no sense in going out more than two because our tables don't have more than two. So that's pretty much a maximum there. Okay, so now we have our test stat. That's our test stat. Now, the next step is to calculate the p-value. In order to calculate the p-value, we actually, actually have to plot this number on a bell curve. And then once we've done that, we're going to look at where that number score, where that number lands, and then calculate a tail area. And then in this case, because it's a two-tail test, we'll actually have to double the tail area we find. Okay, so let's do that then. Let's go ahead and put that 3.05 on our curve. Okay, so I'm just going to put a sheet of paper over the top of that one and work this out now. So I'm going to put the bell curve here. This is a z-test. I'll put 3.05 on the right-hand side. That's our test stat, right? We put our test stat where it belongs on the curve. In this case, it's on the right-hand side because it's large, right? On the right-hand side of the curve. Now, the rule for a two-tailed test, which this one is because HA has not equal to in it, right? Because our HA said not equal to, we know it's a two-tailed test, right? We can see that there where it says HA. The mean of females is not equal to the mean for males. We know it's two-tailed because of that. And the rule is we find the tail area and we double it then. So let's try to look this up on our chart to see what 3.05 gives us so we can find the area from here to here. Once we've done that, we will then have the area in the white space and we can use 0.5 minus that area to get the tail area. And when we're finished with that, we have to remember we must double the answer and that's our p-value. All right, so let's go to the z-table and look up 3.05. Okay, so we're trying to find the value 3.05 on the Z chart here. So we're going to scroll down until we see the row for 3.05. All right, so there we see 3.0 on the bottom of our screen. And we'll go over to we see the fifth position or the sixth position, which is actually 3.05. So that's 3.0, 3.01, 3.02, 3.03, 3.04, 3.05. So the value is 0.4989. Okay, so from the z-chart, we got the value 0.4989. And then, of course, when we subtract that number from 0 0.500, 0 0.4989 from 500, we get 0 0.0011. Now, that means that our p-value is actually twice that tail area, right? Because remember, the tail area is 0 0.0011, but in a two-tail test, the p-value is twice that tail area. So the p-value is actually two times 0 0.0011, which of course is 0 0.0022. Okay, so that's our p-value. Now let's compare that p-value. So the p-value is equal to 0 0.0022. Let's compare that to alpha, which is 5%, right? So 0 0.05 is equal to alpha. Now how does that compare? Well, it means that the p-value is less than alpha. So we have a rule that says when the p-value is less than alpha, we reject HO. So we're going to conclude that we should reject HO and therefore support HA. Okay, so remember that if we reject HO, we support HA. And when we go back to our original problem, we see that in the original problem, the claim here that we were dealing with we actually look at that, the claim here was HA. So that means we're going to support HA and reject HO as a consequence, right? So we're going to say that the sample data support the claim that there is a difference between the GPAs on average for females and the GPAs on average for males, right? Okay, so the sample data support the claim. The sample data support the claim. that there is a difference. Dot, 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 right? So there is a difference between male GPAs and female GPAs. And of course, since women actually had the higher sample GPA here, right? We're going to assume that the difference means that women actually do better than men. All right, that's it. So just keep in mind that we use the phrase support here because our original claim was HA. Don't forget that if our original claim had been HO, we would be saying that the sample data, data allow us to reject the claim. But here the original claim was HA, so we say the sample data support the claim that there is a significant difference between female GPAs and male GPAs.